again. My name is Brian Wood. I work in PR here at Wolfram Research. Uh, I'm talking today with Daria Perechna. Uh, she's in the blockchain group and she's been working on new cryptography features in the Wolfram language. Um, so the main thing that it looks like you're, you're talking about today has to do with elliptic curve cryptography. Uh, could you explain just a little bit about that concept and, and like what the importance is of elliptic curve cryptography? It sounds, it sounds very complicated. Hi, Brian. And yes, I was going to talk about a lot of new things that we have implemented for the coming version of Mathematica 12.2. And yes, a big chunk of them as the support of uh, more elliptic curves. And elliptic curves are an asymmetric a uh, cryptography algorithm, which means that you got to have two keys. One is your private key with which you're going to decrypt data or sign, um, you know, create digital signatures and a public key that you're going to share with others for them to be able to verify your digital signatures. And a big plus of the elliptic curves algorithm is that they take much, much less space uh, the actual keys and the signatures than the RSA. And so they're faster to transmit and they're easier to store. And that has gained them popularity. And the thing that has gained them popularity was Bitcoin. <laughs> because yeah, they were I was, first uh, to start using them. Right. So, th so this is something that's used pretty commonly in, in all kinds of blockchain applications then? Yeah, I think most, I mean, I cannot come up with a cryptocurrency that doesn't use them. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, so what exactly is it that's new uh, for, for Wolfram language in elliptic cryptography right now? Um, well, mostly we have added support for more elliptic curves. The first time we rolled out the digital signatures on elliptic curves, uh, we have just used the one uh, that was used in Bitcoin and mostly a lot of cryptocurrencies because we wanted to interact with those blockchains. Mm -hmm. And since it worked well, we have perfected, you know, the looks, uh, the way it's represented and designed in the language. We are now just rolling more elliptic curves to be to keep up with the other libraries and you know the curves that are recommended by institutions and the curves that are safe. And another thing was uh, another algorithm. It's called the Schnorr digital signature. It's also based on elliptic curves. It's just slightly different. Uh, so elliptic curve <laughs> digital signature. Okay. Um, so now we're going to so, support three different uh, digital signature algorithms, which is RSA, ECDSA, which is the standard elliptic curve, and Schnorr. Okay. Um, so can, can you give me an example, I guess, uh, I know you're talking about digital signatures. Um, is is can you can you kind of describe exactly how people would use these algorithms? Well, a digital signature is sort of like a normal paper signature you would put on a document, though it is much better because it's binded to the actual information inside the document. So mm -hmm. if something changes, you may not be able to see it with your eye. You know, if there is a typo, if there is an extra zero in the sum, you are agreeing to pay. <laughs> right. Get a look uh, real digital hard. signature <laughs> is gonna is gonna detect that. It's just not gonna verify anymore if the file changes. So they're very important to establish the authorship and to be able to verify it. So it kind of so you know puts both binds the person to a document and then the information inside the document. The right. so, so it's almost like uh, like checking a signature on on a check or a document or something, just digitally. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and better, obviously, because like you said, computers do it a lot better than we humans. Um, so, what else is new? I know you you had a bit to talk about with file encryption, I believe, and. Uh, PEM, PEM files. So what, what can you tell me about those? Oh, PEM files is the format of storing and transmitting uh, different cryptographic data, including keys, 
the certificates, uh, encrypted data, signed data. So it's kind of sort of a standard way, one of the standard ways of storing and transmitting the cryptographic messages. And a new thing, and it's a big new thing in Valve 2, is we are able to import those files and interact with them. I mean, I just got to show it. <laughs> I cannot just talk about it. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, here is the notebook that specified that was less than the new features that we have at 12.2. And since we're now talking about VM files, um, you know, it's a part of cryptography, but it just integrated fully into our import expert uh, framework and the language. You just put in a file and it imports it in a way of the key that is already computable. You just can take this key and you know create digital signatures with it or uh, encrypt something, and you know just to be clear, the file itself is absolutely unreadable to to a normal person. That's what it looked like. Ah, uh, yeah. And you know there there are applications that can read it, but to represent it in this way, completely computable, I don't think anyone else is doing it, and this is great. That's interesting. Yeah. So, so it's the the file itself is sort of in in an encrypted structure, but when we import it, it actually recognizes the specific type and and cipher and things like that. Is that how that works? Yeah, because that structure is encoded according to some rules. Uh -huh. okay. um, it has like tags. It has the row bytes, uh, and you gotta have to detangle it basically. And so we detangle it using OpenSSL in the C++, and then that data we also interpret in multiple language side to be able to give you this. Cool. Um, so people can have any any number of different uh, different methods for creating these files, and when you import it, it'll it'll sort of automatically work. Yeah. For example, if you already have like your keys that are connecting you to an AWS client, uh, you can connect. You can import them and you can use them, for example. Um, and it's not just keys. Uh, this is also a new thing at 12.2. You know, this file can have more oh. things than one. Uh, it can have certificates and you can see all sorts of data, who the certificate was issued to, by whom, when it's valid. You could check the validity. You could access all sorts of things. And that just opens, uh, yeah, it just opens a lot of possibilities to interact with this data. Yeah, yeah. So I can I can imagine just a, a file with with just pages and pages and pages of what seems like, you know, gibberish to any human, uh, and then this this Wolfram language import can just turn it into oh okay this is a certificate this is a key this is you know this different uh, different types of security, different encryption things. Um, yeah, cool. and you can just go and query this object for whatever thing you like, um, you know, programmatically to be able to compute or interact or- Ah, uh, cool. It's more details. So, so what, what other kinds of properties can you get from those uh, in general? Well, you can just query for properties. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's the easy way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so not only does it recognize all of these things, uh, it can give you the individual pieces of information to, to sort of break it apart and be able to process it in whatever way you want. I mean, when we were, uh, when we were developing and testing this, I have encountered a file that had 200 certificates in it. And wow. we were just able to decode them too. Wow, that's, that's pretty Quite impressive. Exciting. Yeah, that's that is really interesting. Uh, so I can imagine that anybody who who regularly deals with these kinds of files would be really interested to see this. Um, and it's also useful for, again, explaining what the things are. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and on, on the subject um, of explaining things, uh, I, I know you've got a note here about the course on Wolfram U. So is that something that is going to be coming up pretty soon? Well, I'm not sure about pretty soon, but it's something okay. we have certainly started to work on. Um, sure. But now because we're preparing for the release, it's sort of a little bit postponed 
to groom all the certificates up uh, mm. for the release. So, but this is going to be coming. Yes, this is going to be a course on introduction to cryptography using all this, you know, amazing functionality we already have in the packlet and in the language in the unique way our language can, you know, represent things symbolically and computationally. So you can explain all the sorts of, uh, you know, you can explain the algorithm of RSA, like here, the keys and this digital signatures is RSA. And in our language, you can explain this just symbolically, right in the equation, how RSA works. And the same time was this practical things. Right. So, yeah. uh, so who exactly? It's, it's planned to be like about 30 lectures, 15 minutes each, maybe more. So it's still going to be pretty profound. And, and that's, uh, is, is that targeted for um, like undergrads, you said, in, in cryptography? Or yeah, what, I think what, this what is types going to be folks? targeted for like undergrad students. Uh, they're studying computer science and, you know, want to familiarize themselves with cryptography because, you know, in the modern world, it's everywhere. Like you just yes. get to know it. Um, you got to know how to use it and what it does and what is the difference between hash encryption and digital signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can, I can definitely uh, imagine uh, this would have been a really interesting course for me in my undergrad. So. Um, because I have want... done lectures for the summer school already and I have studied cryptography in my university. I have notes, I have the books, I have the support of Stephen who's very uh, proficient in writing books and courses. So I think we're <laughs> going to pull it off perfectly. Excellent. Uh, well, was there anything else you wanted to show off from your notebook real quick before we uh, mm -hmm. wrap up here? Well, I wanted to show the, the actual list of course that we are going to be supporting. Um, yeah. the, the things that we have talked before. Um, so yeah, initially there was only this curve that is the one that Bitcoin and Ethereum and other things are based on. But now he, we have added five more and before the release there may be more if I have time. Um, and uh, you can just specify now any curve uh, to generate keys and uh, you can generate digital signatures and it will automatically take the same curve. You don't have to specify it anymore and it just all works together. So, so just out of out of sheer curiosity, because the um, the one of these two fifty six ones was was used in uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, and um, do, so do we actually have? Are there actually algorithms here that are more secure than what's used in uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other blockchain? Applications. The, the, the numbers here uh, stand for the lengths of the key. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the things, the length of the key is one of the good metrics because uh, in the worst case, you would just have to brute force all the keys. So the right. longer the key, the better. So, you know, see, this one has the key twice as long. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that, that number and I thought that might be the case. It's like, yeah. That's, it's very so impressive. So like just to provide more security. Excellent. But, I mean, even this is enough. Right, for right, the, yeah. For, for the time being of humanity, this is now enough. Yeah, and until until we get uh, quantum quantum decryption, then uh, in theory, the, these should all be more than enough for well, most purposes. Nest is already working on the cryptographic standard for the ciphers and signatures that are going to be resistant to quantum computers. So oh. it might actually come out even before quantum computers themselves. Oh, well, there you go. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, good to know. Uh, cool. Well, well, thank you very much. Uh, this is all really excellent information, and I, I am looking forward to. Uh, I will probably take your your blockchain uh, course whenever it is available. So thanks a lot. Now this is going to be to be cryptography course. Oh, cryptography course. There is course. going to be also a blockchain course that are other right. people working. On. Yes, so yes. I misspoke. You're going to have yeah. to take both.
I get, I get the blockchain buzzword stuck in my head. So the, the two are almost the same to me, but you're right. Yeah. Cryptography is even its own interesting subject aside from its applications to blockchain. So either, either course I would be very interested to take. And uh, thank you very much for, for talking with me today. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. You can check out other Wolfram Tech Talks, live coding streams, and more on the Wolfram Research YouTube channel, or see what else is new at wolfram.com.